getting ready for a 12 day road trip. Still got three days before I start driving, heading back to California. First item I wanna do is I'm going to carpet line this partition for a couple reasons. I wanna get like a little bit of extra insulation in the back for winter time. I wanna reduce the amount of road noise and rattling equipment when I'm driving. And uh, there was, oh, the third reason is so I don't have to run this furniture pad anymore between the tool chest and the divider, steel on steel grinding away. So I picked up another 12 by three feet of carpet, which will be enough to do this partition and either the door panel or the left partition. I didn't get enough carpet to do all three. Uh, we'll get there eventually, but I'm thinking I'm not gonna move that cabinet today. So maybe I'll, I'll definitely do this right panel and maybe the door, depending on how smooth this this one installs. And then I have this um, leftover, I forget the acronym, it's a high density self-lubricating plastic, UHMW, ultra high molecular weight, something. Anyway, it's very dense, but uh, what I'm thinking is I'll either put these strips on the outside of the partition on top of the carpet and maybe also on the cart. So it's plastic on plastic as the contact patches. I've got this strip. That's the same depth. This was from a project I did years ago where I ripped it all down on a table saw and I saved the, the leftovers. And then I've got another piece here that's a little bit thicker. That might be enough for put those say on the cart and then I'll put the thinner two strips on the van and then hopefully I can get them to line up. Oh yeah, I got some more down here too. This is even thicker. Yeah, that looks like it's perfect, perfect square. So this is what happens in my garage. Items pile up. I just ran my Magliner back to storage and I went there and the locks had been changed out on my unit going to the office and find out someone broke into my storage unit and tossed everything in there. They opened every case and I just, I spent about 10 minutes there looking through things. Doesn't look like anything was stolen. Um, she said they, they broke into 60 units and they were, they didn't have like big bags or carts or anything. They were just looking for small items like, I don't know, cell phones, jewelry. So I think everything's intact and undamaged. It's just a total mess. So I'm going to try to get back over there tomorrow and um, go through it all. But the thing I was most nervous about is this case here. This is my Canon 30-300. to And it appears they didn't even touch this case. They didn't open it. The lens is in there. Now, I haven't checked it to make sure it hasn't been dropped or damaged. But at first glance, it looks okay. So my bad. I won't be leaving that at storage anymore. I basically just have big bulky items there. I've got some of my construction tools, big items. Like I have a a Honda power washer. I have a big uh, power snake, plumbing snake, some ladders, commercial paint sprayer, some other um, just big construction tools. And then old gear, stands, my two C300s are there, my two EX3s, kind of you know, old obsolete video gear, but still has a little bit of value for me to, to hang on to. This carpet glue, I always start out nice and controlled, no spill, didn't get any on the drop cloth. And then I get near the end of the application and I get a little on the floor, then it's on my shoes, and then I track it in the house. I got it on the driver's seat. But uh, anyway, stuck pretty well. Actually, the carpet piece, first cut, went in. My measurements were correct. I cleaned up that uh, spilled area up top. And then the UHMW went on. I didn't have the right size countersunk drill bit, so I had to freehand these and some of the screw heads are sticking out a little bit but this will be a good test drive going 1300 miles 18 hour drive times two see how it holds up drove it around town and everything seems okay a little test drives including over some speed bumps cleans it up a lot just getting that fernie pad out of there makes it look a lot neater and i like this it's like a lightweight industrial carpet just from the local home depot all right day two midday it's a nice day out, so decided I'm gonna do this, the door panel. I removed the grate, pulled all that old duct tape off of there that the previous owner had installed on the used partition I purchased off Craigslist. 
And then I cut up a piece of masonite and painted it white. So I'm gonna use that to as a solid barrier behind the metal screen. And the van I street parked today, still on a hill, but it's less of a hill than my driveway. And I got, there was like this metal shelf down here, like it's document holder that I removed. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tuck that cable into the corner. It feeds my aftermarket deadbolt. And then I'm gonna pull this door handle off so the carpet can flush up against the metal. Waited a little bit too late in the day to start loading the truck. I got about 15 minutes of light remaining, maybe only 10. So we're gonna do a switch for a couple of days, two camera switch plus graphics. I have one ProRes recorder, but producer wants to also ISO record the graphics feed, PowerPoint slides. And uh, I need this for three, maybe four rental days. And it's gonna be like 125 or 150 a day to rent a ProRes recorder. So basically this show will pay for more than half of another recorder. So I bought a second one, it just came in today and I've got plenty of SD media that's compatible. And what I like about this new HyperDeck is it also has an USB-C input that you can connect an SSD drive to, same as my Pocket 6K camera. So I've got some Samsung drives and that's probably what we'll do on this shoot. And that way I can go several days on one hard drive, faster offload than SD. Uh, one thing I realized after I bought this is it doesn't have uh, separate audio inputs. So my long-term goal with this unit is this will land at a conference at the tech table to ISO record graphics. And quite often they cannot embed the audio over SDI or the graphic ISO, but they can send an XLR. So, uh, but that's not a deal killer for me because uh, more importantly, I bought this unit specifically because it also has time code in, so I can put a locket box on it to match my cameras. And then I've got my switcher that I bought last year. Purchased it like weeks before they announced the replacement model. That's how that goes. These are empty bags that are going to California. Gifting them to Nick. And my bigger dilemma now is I'm running out of space in the truck. I have to put my tool chest ramp on the bottom deck right there. And I can stack a couple cases on top. FX9s will go on top of this blue case. But I wasn't planning to bring this blue case. This is my teleprompter. They added a couple of um, one, maybe two days with a teleprompter. I was planning to use my prompter package that I have in California. But I found out this morning the glass got broken on a chute and the replacement glass has been back ordered. So now I gotta bring my Texas prompter kit, which is one, two, three cases which is like two cases too much for this back area of the van. I'm running out of space. I wanna keep the center aisle open because I got a two day drive and I wanna make some meals on the road. And on my transit to California, I'm gonna spend a night in the back here. And coming home, depending on how tired I am, driving back to Texas, it could be three nights. Like we're supposed to wrap early on the last day, in which case I'll get out of Southern California and uh, spend the first night. So I'm only gonna get, I don't know, drive till I get tired type of thing. In which case, yeah, I may have two nights on the road coming back. So long short of it is, I gotta figure out how to Tetris all of this in here, but still make it convenient because we're gonna be loading in and out every day. All right, it all fits. It's not the most convenient order. I don't like having items on top of the ramp because that means to get my tool chest out, I have to first offload, in this case, three cases and a stack of stingers. But it'll get me there it's just for the drive, the first two days. The one thing I couldn't fit back here, and I knew that was gonna be the case, is these two empty cases for Nick. And I put the ProRes recorder and switcher in one of these cases, but those are gonna have to ride in the side door. I don't like that because I like climbing in and out of the van through this side door when I'm in uh, transit mode at like truck stops and rest areas making meals, but I'll just work with it. I'll have to stack them on the ground in the parking lot, or I can probably maybe put one on the tool chest and one on the ground. That's one way. Now coming back 
I realize I got to go up to Los Angeles and I'm picking up my gear that I left up there because it's been sitting idle for about a year. I only had a couple of rental days last year. And each time I flew in to shoot, I ended up just coming with my own gear because it was going to be time sensitive and I didn't really have the time to do the pick up and drop off. And I didn't really want to go out of pocket to have someone deliver the items to me. So anyway, that stuff's coming back to me. And yeah, that'll probably have to ride inside door in place of those cases. All right, that's all I got for you this week. I'm looking forward to this road trip. It's been a couple weeks since I've been on the road, and it's been a couple months since I've left the state of Texas. That's it. Thanks for watching.